Hello and welcome to the next series of rehashing videos. I'm going to be talking about stigmas and armor set up in PvE and PvP. First of all though, I'll talk about PvE in one video because I don't want them to be clustered up too much and really messy. So let's get started with stigmas. Now as a support set up PvE chanter, you generally want to have at least invincibility mantra and healing burst. You might argue that healing burst has a 3 second cast time so it's not that great but 4k healing is pretty good and honestly a support you're not going to be doing too much. <laughs> like You're going to be spamming a couple of buffs and the heal is really nice so you might as well put it in. Then you can vary a bit between hit mantra, word of life, elemental screed and possibly others. I tend to take hit mantra and word of life depending on the instance but in some exceptions like for say Danuar Reliquary which is the 6 man instance you can take elemental screen instead of maybe word of life. Hit mantra is pretty situational. Take it if you have a bunch of casters that have a pretty good chance of crit spell because otherwise it's not that great of a stigma. So you just make sure you study your team and just put in what's appropriate. Okay, the stigma part was pretty easy. Let's get on to the more fun stuff. I'm going to talk about the armor now and the socketing as well as my accessories and all that other fun stuff. First of all, armor. Now I have, I'm just going to hover briefly five pieces of the Lunatic Modors armor set, so I have everything here. It's not really a set, but you know, all the pieces. As well as the helmet and the shield. This comes from farming the instance quite a bit, so if you're kind of new and trying to get at least good enough gear to run these instances, you can go ahead and use Karoon's or maybe Tiamat Stronghold armor. It doesn't have to be amazing PvE armor, it just has to have PvE stats because as a general rule of thumb, you want to use PvE armor for PvE and not PvP armor because it has more HP and I know I'm saying a lot of PV stuff really fast so <laughs> I'll try not to fluster myself talking. But you generally also want to socket HP stones into these pieces of armor because before 4.0 it was all about that magic resist because Tiamat in Dragon Lord's Refuge was pretty nasty and she did a lot of fire spells and or not spells, skills <laughs> and you could resist some of these as well as her little ads, but nowadays everyone wants HP because the bosses don't really care about your magic resist and there are a lot of ways to get hit by big numbers that kind of are negated by, or like it, but they negate your magic resist rather. So HP is really good because you don't want to die to a couple of big hits from a mob or anything, it'd suck. You can shoot for about maybe 14k, 15k if you're going to socket it. You don't have to get that much because I have 17.2k, but as long as you put in some HP stones you should be uh, alright. And I'm actually going to make a point now that I only have HP 100s in two slots out of the entire armor set because they cost a lot of Kina and I think it was more f efficient to buy HP 85s. This is depending on how much money you're willing to spend and all, among other things, but I think it's okay to spend money on HP 85s because there's a vast difference in price, at least on my server. <laughs> there's an attack 5 parry 13 stone in this because I wasn't paying attention, but just ignore that. You can spend a lot on the HP 105s which are the ancient mana stones or their green equivalents because you only need one of these and you know it's, you gotta invest a little bit. But yeah that's the idea. You just want to put an HP all over the place because you don't want to die and the best way not to die is to have HP. <laughs> Great logic right? Uh, as well as my shield it also has HP in it and my mace is actually magic resist because I use this for PvP as well but it's not too big of a deal. The armor is more important really. And then next are accessories. I actually use the same accessories for my DPS setup in PvE as well as my support, so there's not going to be any variation there, but I just have three pieces of the Hyperion accessories, and then the rest are Karun. You might be wondering why only one of the earring and one of the ring. Well, on a stat for stat basis, if you compare the Karun to the Hyperion, you actually get more crit strike for a single piece one to one. So you have more crit here, you have 11 more, and you have more accuracy. You have, which a pretty big amount, you have uh, 36 more accuracy in the earring. Same with the ring, there's a little bit more of crit strike, you get 11 more, that's actually a lot. The difference of course is that you have less HP because these are mythical, but honestly it's not that big of a deal. Once you have a certain amount of HP, it doesn't really hinder you too much to sacrifice a little bit to get better stats elsewhere. That's my reasoning. You could go ahead and get all the pieces if you're being support for the most HP, but you know, hit a certain threshold and you're okay. Uh, is that it for accessories? I think it is. And my stats, I don't really need to talk about these if I'm in support because they aren't going to be at all relevant. Magic resist is 1659, a whopping amazing number. 
Oh yeah, and if I used fit, it would be magic resist because there's elemental defense on it. But again, it's all about the HP, nothing really else. So that is it for the support side of things. I'm gonna go switch stigmas now and talk about the DPS side. Okay, a change of environment was totally necessary. So let's start with the DPS side of PVE. First of all, I'm gonna talk about stigmas again. I actually prefer to use Invincibility Mantra line alongside of Blessing of Wind. You could argue that you can use the entire DPS line, but in my opinion this one is really strong because first of all Invincibility Mantra gives you more attack and magic boost, really good stats to have for PvE. On top of that, Blessing of Wind requires using or requires magic boost as your damage output, so higher MB from IM also makes it really nice. And then you have less attacks overall, but generally you're going to be weaving a lot, so it's not too big of a deal that you're not spamming as many attacks because at the end of the day, a lot of weaves are going to matter, and you, know, you can get a lot of weaves in with only these many skills, which isn't even that low, in my opinion. Okay. Now I'll talk about the armor side of things. So I have the full Hyperion set, which is going to be pretty hard to farm if you're just starting out, so you can get away with. Uh, let's see, things I've seen in the past are maybe a leather set of some kind, like the 50E leather because it has six slots, or before this I was using the SEALs armor leather. Generally leather is pretty good for PvE DPS because it gives you crit strike and attack modifiers, but you can be okay with maybe something as low as team at stronghold armor. It, it depends on how much you're willing to work for it. Just look up armor stats beforehand and try to figure out what is worth the time farming for you because I can suggest everything but at the end of the day it's your decision so yeah I'm gonna talk about mana stones because these are gonna be more universal in 4.0 you want a lot of crit strike well you wanted a lot of crit strike in 3.02 but now it's even more important because if you're gonna be doing DPS on things like dredge bosses you're gonna want a lot of crit strike because they tend to have a ton of strike resist and I have 1248 crit strike which you might be thinking holy crap that's so much well it's actually just about enough because I think 1200 ish is the minimum you need to have a pretty decent crit rate on world bot or not world like normal bosses in 4.0 uh, I was told that around that number anyway but you can get away with things like 1k or 1.1k it's just the more the merrier when it comes to crit and that's a saying I will always use because crit is always great to have in high numbers except when you hit something like 1500 but that doesn't happen too much and then I also have attack socketed because attack is really important in PvE. So I'm gonna go through all my armor pieces now, just a little bit through to each, and you're gonna notice that there's a trend here. I have at least two crits and two attacks. The next other slots are gonna vary depending on what I was thinking about numbers, but I put in a couple of accuracy 33s just to have a nice amount of accuracy because you actually want at least 3k to not get parry and evaded, but I think 3.1k is a little safer. I'm not exactly sure on this number, but you generally need a pretty decent amount of accuracy too, otherwise it's going to kind of negate your damage again. And then attack is at 1008, because I'm running the attack mantra, the crit mantra, and the IM mantra. <laughs> IM mantra, that's redundant. Invincibility mantra mantra. Uh, two things about that. First of all, it's really good for yourself, and if there's any casters in team, it's actually not that good for them. But if you're DPSing, then you want your DPS to be good, right? <laughs> totally greedy on that end. My weapon actually has all just crit because crit's really important in a weapon, so yeah, I just put crit there. And I didn't even enchant it fully because I was like, nah, it's PV. <laughs> Great reasoning, I know. But those are my stats. Over 1k attack, over 3.1k accuracy, and over 1200 crit strike. The other stats aren't that important besides maybe magic boost, but mine's not that high because my weapon isn't enchanted too far. It's 1551. It's a nice little number there. Uh, my accessories are the same as in my PvE setup, so again, it's just three pieces of Hyperion Opal, and then the rest is Karoons. And actually, this is where the Hyperion comes into play, because you get a really nice set bonus here. It might be hard to see with all the pink and purple, but you have 54 crit strike on top of the normal pieces, so that makes up for the deficiency in the one to one uh, comparison between Karoons and uh, the Hyperions, but you also get 88 accuracy which is massive and that helps a lot so if you're farming infinity shard the 12 man instance definitely try to at least get the hyperion accessory set because it's so good in pve and i can't emphasize that enough helmet eh, i have one that has three attack in it because attack in a helmet is kind of weird but hey it exists so cool <laughs> 
and that's pretty much all I need to talk about for the DPS side of it. Wings don't really matter. You can just use whatever. I have team at wings. You could use one that has a tag, but it's not that big of a deal. So yes, that should be everything concerning PVE. I also like to use power shards turned on when I'm in DPS set, but that goes without saying. So that'll be pretty much it for the PVE video. Um, well, I guess I can mention this too. I actually have a couple of macros that I use alongside PVE just to make things easier. The only one I'm going to talk about are my accessory macros because I do get occasional questions about these and they're pretty useful to know. But the general idea is that I have two of the lines say use left and it, they come first because I guess that's what swaps first. So the left side of your, I believe this is the left. <laughs> I could be totally wrong, but it switches out. Oh no, it's the right side. Dirt because it's the right side of your character. Okay, let's try that again. Left side of your character is on the right side. It's kind of confusing, but if you're considering where your character is facing, then yes, this is the left. And I actually take out uh, two accessories first, the earrings and the rings, the one that have duplicates. And then on the right side, you just use normal because I guess these watch by default. So if I just go ahead and ex show this without explaining it. Okay. Now just to switch back to my blue mark accessories, that one's not a big deal, but watch these accessories and watch what switch, uh, well, not swips, switches first. So I'm going to push it, and if you saw there, it was these two that switched first, right? That's important. So by default, accessory macros are going to want to switch the right accessories first, but you can specifically input use left to get rid of these two, and then you just make the rest do normally. So there you go. That was kind of messy, but I hope that at least <laughs> explains a bit of the accessory macro part because, yeah, it's pretty much that. So again, use left for one ring and one earring, the rest just normal use, and make sure those go first. Okay, that'll be it for the PvE video. I will make the PvP one next and find another place to stand and idle. <laughs> so just stay tuned for that.